Hello and welcome back to my harebrained idea to turn the V890 into a semi overlander. The goal is to be able to take it out after destination defender for a week long trip in the uh, Big Bend National Park. It's kind of a deserty area. And what we've done is take the rooftop tent off of project trailer, set it on top of the 90, boom, we're all set, right? No, not even close. All of this stuff right here needs to get sorted. This is what I would consider my Overland Essential Kit. I'm gonna go through each one of the pieces with you so anybody new to the adventure lifestyle says, hey, why do I want X, Y, and Z? These are all of my favorite must-have things. So we're gonna start at the start. The most important is that box right there. First up is the modern must-have for your Overland kit. If you have to be responsible for work, like I do, because Eric won't give me any time off, I need to constantly be able to get communications back and forth to the office, or God forbid something happens and we're in an area where phones don't work, the Starlink is what I am considering the new must have in order to have an overland outfitted vehicle. That way you have an emergency contact and you can work from anywhere. So this has to go in the car. Unfortunately, it's kind of a big box. If we had the 130, it's no big deal, but the 90, this is gonna be trouble. Next critical piece is a well sorted out tool chest and I left this multimeter on top on purpose. If you've got a tool kit and you don't have a multimeter in it, go on, go to the store, go to AutoZone, get yourself a little multimeter. It makes troubleshooting things out in the middle of nowhere way easier when you can figure out if there is voltage to the problem or no voltage to the problem, especially in modern vehicles. This is another big chunky piece, but when I was out in Moab, snapped the rear CV. Everything I needed to do the job was here, except for Steve gave me a big H, big F, big F and hammer. I used that too, but I've got a small little hammer in case uh, Steve's not around. So I always bring this tool kit with me. I've had this Pelican case for close to 15 years and it shows Move on to the next part. Another super, super, super essential is recovery gear. We're using the Factor 55 Sawtooth, arguably the best in the business, with a whole bunch of soft shackles. Everything I need is in there. I've got my tree savers, my winch extensions, my uh, snatch blocks, my new modern snatch block that uses just the, um, you know what, I'll show you, it's really cool. The new snatch block from Factor 55, boom. I know there's a lot of hate on these, I love it. And another critical thing here is, don't forget your winch controller. I know a guy that's done it a couple times. So when I'm doing my pre-drive check, I always make sure that that is in there. Sometimes they tend to walk away, you let somebody else borrow them, which is a good thing on all of the modern Warrens, they're using the D style. So if you don't have one and somebody has one, you're generally in good shape, but this is critical. Make sure you get your winch controller, make sure you got your recovery kit. Moving on down the line of critical things, if you have a modern Land Rover, so anything third generation and up, third generation being the air suspension vehicles, you have to have a gap tool. If you don't have a gap tool, you gotta be scratching your head, what is it? This is the ultimate interface for working with the Land Rover computers. It gives you access for diagnostics, but it'll also open up a world of functionality that you didn't know was available. Like we've used it recently for walk away locks. That's a feature you can turn on with the gap tool. But more importantly is if something happens to the air suspension, I can re-enable it. If I get codes out there in the desert from the truck running hot, I can see what's going on must have tool. Another critical must have piece is a jack. I'm using the highfalutin, amazing aluminum hydraulic jack from ARB. One, cause I'm lazy. Two, cause I'm weak. And three, cause it is gosh darn sexy. 
but you can get away usually with just a little bottle jack. Make sure you have some way of easily picking up the axle if you have to change a tire. You don't wanna be out in the desert and realize uh, you have no way to do that. Next up on the overlooked piece of equipment, like a good hydraulic jack, is a shovel. When do you need a shovel? You need a shovel. Yeah, you can go and try to dig with your hands, but having a shovel at the time that you need one will make a world of difference. This is always on my must have list. And last on my must have is a, anybody guess? First aid kit. You get cut, you get scratched, you get bumped, you get bruised out there. It's nice to have a first aid kit at the ready. Now that we've covered a lot of the must haves in my book, we're gonna move on to the niceties, the things that make the adventure way more enjoyable. Of all the things behind me, maybe the chair, depending on the day, but you can use this as a chair. The fridge is the nicest thing that I've come across in this off-road world. It is unbelievably convenient. You can store food for days, and when you open it up, it's not soaking wet with water from ice. Uh, fridge really is a game changer when you wanna live out of your vehicle for days on end. Oh boy. Next creature comfort is a chair. It's silly, and I know I just said I can sit on the fridge, and I've had to do that. I've actually sat on that yellow Pelican case for five days. It was miserable. Cold, wet, you wanna be close to the fire, and here I am, my knees in my chest, trying to sit on a Pelican case. Always bring a chair. For the rest of these, I'm not gonna go in any real particular order. I'm just gonna kind of point them out and explain to you why I think they change the off-road experience. First of all, treads. How many times have we been stuck? Throw this under a wheel and away you go. You can use them as a bridge, you can use them as a table, and you can use them as a shovel, but we're not falling for that because we're bringing our own shovel. A super, super nice product that I've come in contact with is my Devos Light. In the bag is a pole, you can set it way up high. It's got lighting all over the place. One, two, everywhere, nowhere, side and side. Super convenient at a campsite because you're getting overhead light instead of trying to stare into something. Really, really nice kit. Another nicety that I've had for years is a trash -aroo. You can Throw it on the back of the car, store all your trash inside. Vehicle doesn't stink. I keep extra garbage bags in mine. This is a friend I've had for a long time. Always bring a case of water. In fact, I should have put this on the necessity. It's such an obvious one. Always bring more water than you think you're gonna drink. It's not gonna go to waste. You can take it home. And I like to bring like a Gatorade or in this case, Prime. That's my new favorite. Metamoon's the right flavor in case anybody out there is wondering. Extra fuel, super nice to have on trips. Generally, we don't need it here in the States because there's a gas station every four feet, but when you're out there and you get a little bit nervous, that needle starts to dip, especially in this thirsty one, it's nice to have a little bit of extra fuel. And God, I love this. Rotopack with the spout, I use it to wash the dishes, wash my hands, super convenient, makes the life much nicer. All right, we're gonna talk about power supplies. I bring this little jump box. It's not gonna start a totally dead car, but if you got one that somebody left the lights on and it's iffy, you can always throw this on. You can use it as a charger, but I just keep this in the glove box in case. And I bring along a Goal Zero that'll charge my phones. And more importantly, it runs the Starlink. I can run the Starlink from the car. It has a 120 volt outlet, but I find it way easier to run it from this. That way you don't have to have the car idling and we can charge it as we're driving along all day. Nice little kit to have. A nice folding table makes eating way more comfortable. You can set up your laptop to work off of it. And I'm really, really nervous that I'm not gonna have enough room for this. So I may have to find a much smaller folding table, but I'm hoping I can take my stainless front runner one. I like it, it's super sturdy and easy to clean. We're gonna see if there's room. If not, it might be 
a little plastic job for me. All right, starting to get down to the nitty gritty. Give me that back. Raincoat, just throw it in the car, even if it's a poncho. Most of my cars have like a little roll up throwaway poncho in them. You get stuck out in the rain, you're soaked, you will be miserable. Don't forget your sleeping bag and don't forget your pillow. I know a guy that went to Trek and forgot his pillow. He did not have a good night's sleep. So make sure you got a sleeping bag, pillow, make your life so much more enjoyable. All right, I know you guys have been waiting to see what I keep in these cases and I know one of them won't disappoint. First one here is my power tools. Got a impact gun, Sawzall, extra batteries, and the charger. Again, it's not a must have, but when you have it, it makes your life way nicer. Depending on room, this may get cut. I might just take that impact gun and figure out a way to get it into the main Pelican uh, tool case. Next up, my coffee kit. You gotta have a coffee kit, right? Or tea, whatever you're after. Got a bunch of tea bags in here. I've got a grinder for my French press right here. And of course, stainless steel Land Rover mug. Always keep this in the car. And last, but not least, this one is almost self-explanatory. What I've got going on is a Manhattan kit. We've got the two glasses, my shaker, and inside the shaker is the bitters. is all my kit. You've got a quick walkthrough on everything and why I bring it. Now the question is, can we make it all fit in here? I'll report back. I'll see you guys on the next one.